engine, a six-cylinder gasoline engine that was not a very good engine, although it lasted the entire 35 years the railroad ran the car. What kind of diesel it, was it? it? It's a cat, uh, remanufactured now. But that original gasoline engine uh, was really a poor engine. It was it was such a poor engine, it had to have an external flywheel in order to keep the engine running. And the external flywheel is on this car. We no longer need it, but we do have a little hydraulic motor that keeps it going around while we're operating anyway. Had a two-speed transmission, no reverse. So if you wanted to go backwards, it was a, you'd shut the, local, the, the engine down, you'd grab a lever, swing it over, and that changed the entire valve train in the engine. And when you started it, it ran backwards with two speeds. It ran between Reno and Minden, which is about 11 miles south of here, back and forth about three times a week. In 1945, it uh, was retired and everything under the floor was scrapped, the motor was scrapped, all the controls were scrapped, and it became a diner. At that time it was Denny's Diner, no relation to the chain restaurants. And then it became the Super Chief Diner, and eventually it became the offices for Al's Plumbing, just down the street here. And in uh, 1996, Al donated what was left of the car to the museum. I'll finish one after I've made the 9th, 1910. It is an example of early monocoque construction where the shape of the um, machine provides its strength. And someone asked me earlier, why round windows? Well, you know, if you put square windows in something, they can rack. Round windows don't squish at all, and they contribute to the strength of the body of the car. The car was retired right after Nevada Day, the last day of October of 1945, and everything was scrapped. Seats, everything else. And it became a diner. After a while, it became the offices of Al's Plumbing, 1996, Al donated what was left of the car to the Railroad Museum and we started a 14-year restoration project. Much of the time was involved in research. We did not have any photographs of the interior of this car. I can give you one of mine. <laughs> okay, that'll be good evidence. Uh, because we have no photographs of the interior of this car. We looked at other cars, other McKean cars, photographs, and we did have, we knew that we had a pumpkin colored ceiling with pinstriping on it, and we uh, knew other things about the car. So this is the way that the car looked in 1910. I know because you can't prove otherwise. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoy your ride. This car is and not all of them look like this. When we get up to the top of the hill, if you look out the windows on this side of the car, looking up the hill, you will see a yellow car with a green roof.